your current warm-up routine is terrible. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my tailor-made warm-up routine that I've trialed and tested for months now that helped me go from average aim to above average aim. If you want that for yourself too, stick to the end of the video because what I do before I hop into ranked will shock you. Let's get into it. So the first thing that I do is I go into a shooting range. The reason that I go into a shooting range is because there is a certain warm-up routine that you can do within the shooting range that helps you get your three aim basics down. Your three aim basics are recoil control, flicking and tracking. If you lack even one of these, your aim is not going to be up to par compared to the people that are in your rank. Uh, now I'm going to go put my contacts in so I can actually see my monitor and then we'll get straight into it. Okay, now that I can actually see my goddamn monitor, let's get into it. So the first one that I'm going to go over is recoil control. Now you have this entire target here or target of a player here that you can use to see how well your recoil control is. And it does differ from weapon to weapon. So if there's a weapon that you can't control recoil for, you want to focus on those first. But let's say I can't control the G36C somehow. I'm going to put my crosshair at the bottom and I'm going to scroll all the way up. I'm not even going to move my mouse. I'm just going to let the gun shoot for me by just holding down left click or holding down right trigger if you're on console. Now I can see okay the recoil goes pretty straight up and a little bit to the right so what i want to do is i want to pull down and a little bit to the left so now if i try to control that recoil by doing conscious recoil control it's a lot better now the horizontal recoil does suck a bit and if you're on console it's going to be even harder to control so i would run compensator on most things but you want to be really really getting down your recoil control let me give you a more extreme example i brought you onto twitch f2 1.5 with a muzzle brake on and no vertical grip r.i.p twitch's vertical grip now this is her normal recoil rate without me controlling any recoil whatsoever it's pretty bad it doesn't look as bad because i made the target closer but if i put the target farther away it is so much worse than the G36C. Now, let's actually take a look at the recoil pattern so I can consciously know how to fix it. It goes straight up and to the right. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the G36C. I'm just going to pull down and to the left, but a bit more. See, so even then, a bit hard for me to control because I wasn't expecting it. So now that I know I need to actively control it more, let's try it again. That is much better. There was not a single bullet that didn't hit near his head. Once you feel like your recoil control is warmed up for the day on all the weapons you plan on using, you can go into the next step. The next step, you're going to go to lane three and you're going to practice flicking. Use these settings right here, 120 round duration, big ball, four maximum targets. You want them to have walk speed on, you want the target distance to be medium, and you want infinite magazine ammo. And then whenever you're ready, press begin. Now, as you can see, there's aim lab balls that will move across your screen. What you want to do is have your crosshair next to them and practice flicking to them, just like that. You can practice your up flicks, your down flicks. As you can see, I need to work on those. But primarily, the most important ones are your left flicks and your right flicks, because you're going to be aiming head level mostly the entire time. So, practicing your flicking is wildly important. As you can see, I definitely need to practice mine. Now, if you want this to be easier for you and not as hard as I made it, you can put the target distance to near, which will make the balls closer to you, which will make them a bigger target to hit. You can start off on these, and then if you feel like you're comfortable on it, you can then work your way to ones that are farther and farther away. Or if you have a better close shot than you do a far away one in terms of flicking, you can start off on far and then work your way towards near. It all depends on what you're best at. Now, typically you want to go until you get a 90% accuracy if you're on PC or a 75% accuracy if you're on console. And you want to do this with every scope. So if I can get a 90% accuracy with the one time scope, then I want to move on to, let's say the G36C with a 1.5. And then I want to do the exact same thing on the 1.5 time scope. And you just want to be doing this for every single scope that you plan on using throughout the day. For me, I don't plan on using the 3X scope, Cali scope, Glazis scope, or even the ACOGs. So I'm not going to warm up with those, but I do plan on using the one times and the 1.5 so i'm just going to primarily warm up on those but with that out of the way let's go into the final pillar of aim which is tracking now if you want to practice your tracking copy these settings right here and press begin now what you're going to do is you're going to see the dummies on screen just like so they're going to walk what you're going to do is you're not even going to try to kill them you're just going to try to track their heads until the timer is over once you've been tracking the head until they've hit the wall and disappeared you can track a different person's head and then just keep going and if you want more of a challenge you can set them far 
farther back or you can have them run faster. Either way, it doesn't really matter. But training your tracking is just as important as the other two things that I've highlighted. Now, once you feel like you've warmed up your basics and your aim feels a little bit more comfortable and you're able to actually use it, next, you're going to want to go into a lone wolf training ground. You want to set your game mode onto disarm bomb. This will become important later. Again, you want to be picking the scopes that you're going to be using for the day. So because I plan on just using the one times and 1.5, I'm going to pick a gun with the one times for a one terrorist taunt, and then I'm going to pick one with the 1.5 for one terrorist taunt. For this one, let's try the one time scope first. With terrorist, the settings you want to use is you want to have them on normal and you want to do headshots only because you're going to practice just aiming head level. That is the entire purpose of this T-Hunt is to aim head level. You don't want to have them on realistic because if you wanted to fight against people who are actually shooting back, you would again just go into deathmatch. You want to put them on normal because again, this is just to practice aiming head level and shooting people once you know that you've aimed onto their head. If I break this barricade and now I want to practice quick leaning, right? Okay, quickly in here, don't see him. I quickly in here, I see him. ADS, shoot him, right? Quickly in here, quickly in maybe ADS this time. Crouch, shoot him. Quickly in, quickly in, quickly in. Okay, no one else is here, no one else is here. Come in here, quickly in, okay, quickly in, okay, quickly in. Oh, see a guy there, crouch, get him. Quickly in, quickly in, there. Quickly in, quickly in, quickly in. And then you can go to the other door, right? Quickly in, quickly in, quickly in. You wanna practice your quick leaning. You wanna practice running in, ADS, head level. You're gonna practice swinging, head level. And then being able to adjust crouch level right and then th it's just crosshair placement the entire purpose of what you're doing here is practicing your leaning and crosshair placement once you run around the entire map and you shot every alive terrorist it's time to defuse one of the bombs but when you do defuse this bomb there's one point to doing this and that is to put yourself in the perspective of a defender now instead of swinging angles quick leaning and being aggressive you want to play passive you want to hold angles you want to practice swinging before you're swung you want to practice sitting in good position so now you're practicing more so your positioning but also they're going to walk at you so you still want to be trying to aim head level and practicing your crosshair placement right so now you're warming up on attack and defense all in one terrorist hunt instead of trying to change your matchmaking preferences to do both Now, once you've defused one of the bombs, you can go ahead and leave unless you still feel like you're not warmed up on that scope, then defuse the second one, and you should be good by then. Next, go on to the other scope you want to use, mine being the 1.5, and do the exact same thing. Now, me personally, this is cool and all, but sometimes I like using DMRs, so I like to go around with my pistol and practicing my trigger finger as well, kind of in the middle of me warming up with my 1.5 or one time scope whenever I'm just out of ammo and I have some downtime and I just want to practice my trigger finger. Like, if I kill all the terrorists in one room and I'm, like, waiting for more terrorists to spawn or make noise so I can go kill them, I'll just, like... Okay, cool. Now, let me go kill him. You can practice your trigger finger in your down times of your T hunts, or like in your down times of, let's say, a death match. If you run out of ammo, you just go. Okay, that was terrible. Let me redo it. Okay, cool. Now, let me go back to my actual weapon and let's continue, right? So, like, that's the entire purpose. Or you can do what I do, which is you just literally take an entire terrorist hunt and you just go around fucking people up. And now you have your secondary weapons also completely practiced. And if you go to use a DMR, it's like pretty good. But once you're done with all of that it is time for the final but most important steps of the warm-up routine which is just going into a deathmatch or a free-for-all so you're going to press a quick play you're going to scroll to arcade click the settings button and only have on free-for-all and deathmatch the entire point of this is to just practice shooting real players so that you can get a feel of what shooting actual real players feels like so you don't go into a ranked being really good against t-hunt bots but then you're shooting actual players and they're moving so crazy that now your warm-up is completely for naught because people in game move completely 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 differently than people in a t-hunt also legendary alpha pack while we wait for the queue damn okay anyways let's get into the deathmatch so with deathmatches specifically, you want to really just be trying to be aggressive. The entire point isn't to win, it's just to get into as many gunfights as possible so you can practice getting into gunfights. You're not trying to go for a score, you're not trying to win, you're just trying to kill people. So don't be sitting in corners, don't be holding long angles, don't be a pussy. Walk in and run at people until you kill them. It is that simple. You really want to focus on aiming head level, which is going to help you a lot whenever you're fighting actual players. But the entire point of everything that I've talked about so far is you want to get a feel of all of your guns, of what you're 
weaknesses are so you can fix them and just how your gun skill is in the current day so that you know what to fix in the deathmatch. Like I said, this is the most important. You can trial everything that I said up until now, but if you aren't actively trying to fix your mistakes while you're in the deathmatch, it is all going to be for nothing. Now, if you don't want a 30 minute warm up routine, which is kind of what I've outlined for you today, instead of doing one deathmatch per every scope you want to use, a deathmatch lasts eight minutes. So you can split up your deathmatch into four minute intervals and use the one time scope for the first four minutes and the 1.5 for the second four minutes. This is what I do whenever I go live on Twitch, just because I hate to leave my audience waiting. Link is in description. And with that out of the way, let's finish the deathmatch. So now you finish the deathmatch or free for all, whatever you got queued into, you should be pretty warmed up. There shouldn't be a single reason why you aren't warmed up. And if you still feel like you're off, you need to identify why you feel like you're off. Because like I said, there's three pillars of aim. And if you're feeling off, one or more of those pillars are probably not warmed up enough. And you can just simply go back into the shooting range, trial which one is actually off, and then fix it, and then go into a ranked game. But either way, you should be pretty warmed up by now. If you want more basic guides like this, sub the channel down below, and check out this video where I talk about the fact that you are probably using observation blockers wrong and how to use them correctly. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Later.